Hi, Matt from Swiftix Software here. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video. In this video, I will show you how to make API calls to Jira Cloud uh, from an Atlassian Forge app. And this is module two from section two of my full Jira Cloud Forge course on Udemy. If you would like to learn more about how to write your own Jira Cloud apps, then have a look in the description where there's a link to my full, full course on Udemy. Anyway, hope you enjoy this video. Okay, so let's talk about REST APIs. Forge has a good uh, API for interacting with Jira, and it's the Forge API. So in order to be able to use the Forge API, we first need to install the package in our app. So what I have here, um, just to recap, is the really simple app that we built at the beginning of of this journey, this course, which is the one that just says, hello world, it uses UIKit. It's essentially not much more than, than two files really, which is the manifest file, manifest.yaml and index.jsx. And it uses UIKit to create the user interface. At the moment, all it says is hello world. What I want to do is I want to make this a bit more interesting. I want to say um, number of issues, for example. So what we we're going to do is we're going to get the number of issues from Jira and display it here on this page. So what we'll do is the first thing we'll do is we install the uh, Forge API package. So we go to npm install at Forge API. And with the Forge API, we can then start making calls, API calls to Jira via the REST API and then get the information back and display it here. So what I'll do is, the first thing I'll do is I'll show you the documentation. And here I will introduce you to something really important. And this is developer.atlassian.com. So developer.atlassian.com is your entry point for all things development documentation. I showed you the development console already, which lives here on developer.atlassian.com slash console. So I've shown you that before, but if we go to developer.atlassian.com, this is where all the documentation is. So there's documentation about Forge, um, there's documentation about planning your app and the marketplace, etc. And also down here, you can say there's Jira Cloud and there's the REST API. So let's open up the REST API documentation. And here I'll take you through this process of working out how to make a call to the REST API, testing it out quickly, and then how to add that call to your app and how to use the results from that call within your app to, um, to display something, do something useful. So what I'm gonna do here is I said I was gonna do I was going to get the number of issues. Right, let's do that. Number of issues. So there's issue search down here in the REST API. So I'm looking at the REST API documentation at the moment. I go to issue search. And there's a, a few different ways of searching, but I'm going to use the JQL approach using a GET request. And what this is, is you use the endpoint REST API 3 search, and you can add your JQL to that with the JQL query parameter. So it's slash rest slash API slash slash three slash search. Three is the version number of this API and we're at version three at the moment. So what we'll do is if we go to Jira here, we can just say, take all of that away from the URL. So it's musclev.atlassian.net. And now we paste what I just copied, which is slash rest, slash API, slash three, slash search. And what this does is it's now actually run the API call and um, Firefox here has kindly rendered the response in such a way that it's really quite easy to read as well. Okay, so that's interesting. And we said, um, oh, we could, um, we could use JQL as well. So for example, if you wanted to, you could also say JQL equals, and that's where your, your Jira query language query goes. You know, we can add that as well, but let's, let's keep it simple for now. So just rest API three search. 
what we want at this point is the number of issues. Well, we can see that here because the Jira is really helpful and gives us a total of the number of issues right at the top. So it's just saying in that response, there's an element called total and a JSON element called total, and it just has the value three. So there are three issues in this test instance of Jira at the moment. Fantastic. So we want to make this call to Jira via the REST API. So we've installed Forge API in our app. Now what we need to do is we need to import it in app in index.js so we can start using it. So import API. And there's something else we need as well, something called root. Um, so those are the two things I will import and I'll import it from at forge API. Excellent. So I've got these things now. I've got API and I've got root. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a little function that now gets me the number of issues by making a call to the REST API. So the call we've made here to REST API 3 search, and where we've got the total of three, we're going to make this call now from here in a function. So let's call it fetch number of issues. And um, it has to be an asynchronous function. And the reason it has to be asynchronous is because we want to wait for results before we carry on in the function. And in order to be able to use await, it has to be an asynchronous function. So there's um, a call that we're making and the call will return a response. So the response is API dot as user dot request Jira. And all we have to say now is root. This will basically make sure that, you know, we don't have to worry about where the app lives. You know, we don't have to worry in this URL. We don't have to worry about any of this. All we worry about is REST API 3 search. So what we'll do is we'll just say root and then back quote. And that has to be back quote on a UK keyboard that's in the top left corner of your keyboard in, in case you're looking for it. So it's back quote and then REST API 3 search. That makes the request to Jira. But what we want to do is we want to read read the JSON from the response. So for that reason, we have to say await, which basically means we have to wait for that to actually happen and return a response. And then we say um, there's some data that's being uh, returned as well. So we also wait for that. And that's response dot JSON, the JSON data. And JSON is, um, you know, JSON data is is something that JavaScript developers and Node.js developers are very familiar with. Uh, it's really easy to work with JSON responses in in JavaScript because you can literally address it directly. And now that we have the response, we have the data. We know it's data that is being returned, and we know it's the element called total. So we literally just say return data dot total. And total is that. That's great. We have a function to do this now, right? So in our app, um, which is in, in this element here, in our app, we now need to call this function and get the information, get that data, so we can actually use it. So we say const num issues. And this has to be in an array. Um, it's It's to do with how we're going to use it later on, but it's const num issues equals use state. And I'll explain all of that much more later on as well, but let's take it as red is use state. And it has to be an asynchronous call because we want to wait for the results before we carry on. So it's a wait, fetch num issues, fetch number of issues, I should say. So what this does is it's an asynchronous call. When this call completes, it will, num issues will contain the right value. That's how it works. So what we're going to do is we now use num issues in this fragment, in this text fragment. 
And the way we can do that is we can simply just say curly braces num issues. And that's it. So let's deploy this app. But there is something else that we haven't done here yet. But I want to demonstrate it to you rather than just do it. So what we'll say is we'll say forge deploy. Now there's an error here now as a result of this because it's saying I require a particular permission scope and that permission scope is read JIRA work. What it means is in order to be able to read information from JIRA, I need to, um, to have that permission scope. My app doesn't have any particular permissions. We've already come across permissions. You remember the um, unsafe inline from um, custom UI earlier on? It's a similar thing. So we add permissions into the manifest.yaml. We add permissions, scopes, and the scope we add is read colon Jira work. And then we deploy it again. We've now given ourselves that permission. So now there are no issues and the app can be deployed. It's now deploying the app. So I'm just going to hit back on here. So I go back to Jira. The app is still deploying. It's not quite ready yet. Right. There's something else that you might remember earlier on from custom UI, which is we have given this app new permissions. Well, the user needs to be able to accept those permissions. So we need to install that app again in our dev instance. So we say forge install minus minus upgrade. Because when you have a new, um, a new permission or a new scope, you always have to upgrade your installation. So forge install minus minus upgrade. And, you know, um, forge reminds us of this, which is really good. So I've done this now. Now let's refresh this page. Now I should say number of issues. No, it doesn't because it still wants me to confirm that I'm happy for the app to do this. So I'm saying, yes, please allow access for this app. So I'm saying allow access. I say accept. And now it says number of issues, three. It's got the information from Jira by the REST API, and it then uses um, the, the reference to that information in the fragment that we're returning to display the actual number of issues to the user. That is how you use the REST API. That is how you make REST calls to Jira in order to get information to display within your app.